Hi, everyone. Happy to welcome you all back. So we have already done several programs into learning from experts, and it was very good response in each and every one. I think, uh, in personally, I'm learning a lot of things from our experts. We're talking about different central influence we covers and how to be for today uh, being uh, Mr. John. And again, Judd is came up to talk about some uh, prospecting ideas. And again, as we discussed last time uh, about uh, how to do a digital marketing. So today we are going with the topic, digital branding and marketing. So I again invited Mr. Kobus to come out, talk about how to be a profiling into LinkedIn. What are the important things you have to be for, uh, possible to do it in a social media and marketing himself as an insurance advisor. So before inviting Mr. Kobus again, I'm just putting a short bio about him. That is Mr. Kobus. Uh, he was been a uh, MDRD uh, life member more than uh, more than 20 years with uh, uh, South Africa about uh, doing it several uh, client bases. And we are, but you've been with the uh, uh, MDRD PGA, MDRD a different, and he also speak a lot of learning from Mr. Kobus. And he also a certified financial planner and also your tax practitioner. So. He's the one is that uh, more uh, capable of I mean learning from him because he, if in the South Africa he was being a one a legend kind of things he used to do a lot of uh, inputs and the main thing is uh, he's the person who's friendly will ask uh, Mr. Kobus I need to learn from something he the person voluntarily come friend and talk about that definitely I'll help you on airport so I'm utilizing this opportunity to to learn a lot from him so today we are going to discuss about very important topics about digital branding and marketing. So I'm not taking much time moving to Mr. Kobus. I'm happy to invite to our program again. Good morning, Mr. Kobus. Thank you, Thank you Sakti. Good morning yeah, from our country as well. What a pleasure to be on your program again. And I love sharing ideas because it really helps our profession to grow. If advisors learn from it, I've learned from people that I've listened to, that you've interviewed, it's fantastic. Today, I want to speak about something I'm very passionate about, and that's digital branding and marketing. But it's a whole concept of social media and the power of social media and what it brings to us as financial advisors, financial planners. We should never underestimate the power of social media, the power of LinkedIn, the power of Twitter, Instagram, even the power of Facebook, as an example. There's many platforms we can use. I decided over years, um, since I've joined social media in 2005, when it was still a young thing, I decided to use as my primary platform, LinkedIn. Now people are saying, Kubis, but there's so many platforms. Why are you using LinkedIn as your primary platform? Well, firstly, what is important is if you're gonna try to focus on three or four or five different platforms, social media platforms, you're going, to be, you're going to have so much to focus on. You're going to have to, so much to concentrate on. You're going to spend so much time on it to firstly learn it, to understand how it works, that you're maybe not going to get the value out of that platform that you're using. So I decided maybe if I can use LinkedIn and I can embrace LinkedIn and I can couple that to, for instance, I'm Twitter and to, for instance, Instagram, but not as my primary platforms, as my sub-platform. Maybe I can get, 100% efficiency out of it. Because if you use LinkedIn correctly, and if LinkedIn is your professional platform, your professional area you go to because your clients, you want to be professionals, you want them to be small, medium enterprises, have their own businesses, be entrepreneurs, you want to find the corporate people on it, the CEOs, the MDs, you want to find them on them. You're not going to find them on Facebook. Per se, you could find them on Facebook, but in a different circumstances, in circumstances where they want to relax, not in circumstances where they want to talk business. So therefore, my platform was LinkedIn because I thought that if I can address the right people on the right platforms with the right companies and the right positions or the right organizations, or they have their own small businesses, or they are professionals like doctors, psychologists, um, uh, chartered accountants, engineers, that is where you want to then focus on. Now, I want to talk in general, as I said, I'm going to talk about LinkedIn, 
but it's really the power of social media. So you may get that on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, you may combine them, but I want to focus for financial professionals on LinkedIn. So listen to what I'm saying. I'm focusing on LinkedIn because I believe it's for financial professionals and for our professionals where you can get the most value from. It doesn't matter if it's prospecting for new clients. It doesn't matter if it's for branding so that people know who you are. And it doesn't matter if it's for marketing and marketing your brand, for instance, or your company or your platform or your product. It doesn't matter what it is about. It is about it's the platform where you're going to get the most efficiency out. Now, if LinkedIn is the platform where we are going to get the most efficiency out, the question is, how do we use it? How do we make this work for us? Well, it really starts, Sakti, with your profile brand. I mean, you can't have the wrong picture on there. You can't have the wrong information on there. You, you have to have introductions on there that tells them in a single line who you are. Are you working to change clients' lives or are you just a financial planner? So the headings, the, the content in your profile makes a huge difference. And I really want to emphasize on it that if you're going to have a profile photo with sunglasses on, I mean, really, is that professional or not? You can have a profile where you're not dressed professionally. Is that the one you should have? Made? But a profile must be authentic. You can't write a profile or have a picture that really doesn't look like you or doesn't feel like you. Authenticity, when it comes to personal branding, when it comes to digital marketing, is what's going to make the difference. It is the differentiator between you and 20,000 other financial advisors in your country or globally, or 100,000 or 200,000, but it's the personal Corbis claim, the Corbis claim incorporation that must stand out. So if you then get your profile right, and I'm not going to go through detail about how to get your profile right, but if you get your profile right, then your LinkedIn profile would be right if you see the all-star sign on the right end or somewhere on the page. If it doesn't say all-star, it means you didn't use the wizard effectively to get you to all-star status where all your content is right, your qualifications is right, your recognition is right, your, 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 your endorsements are right. There's so much to cover. But LinkedIn makes it easy for you because they've got the flow wizard that you can follow. Now let's go back to how do you use that firstly for personal branding? Because personal branding, my friends, are what's going to drive your business forward it's what's going to drive your client base forward. It's what's going to sustain your client base so that other people don't enter into your client base or take your clients away from you. And therefore, the personal branding is about putting yourself out there. Are you on LinkedIn on a regular basis? Are you creating a presence on LinkedIn? Are you making noise on LinkedIn where people see you all the time? Are you there for connecting to the right people? And are you following the right people? And are people starting to follow you? Now, if you create content, and yes, what's important, my friends, you can't just share content. You can't just share quotes. You have to put yourself out there by writing articles, by posting short posts, by publishing long articles. Because if you don't do those things, people can't see you. You need to start writing your own quotes, for instance, that you can share and post. Because the more you do of that, your brand is starting to stand out. People see your picture. And by the way, your picture on your profile, you should be changing on a regular basis. Because otherwise, it gets boring for people to look at your face and the same face all the time. So therefore, change your picture every now and then. But when people see your picture all day on a regular basis, and that's what it is about continuity, about posting on a regular basis, people need to feel you, they need to see you, and therefore, thought leadership articles, thought leadership posts becomes important. If you're a financial planner, my friends, why not write about financial planning? Why don't write about critical illness? Why don't write about estate planning, retirement planning, investment planning? 
Put it out there. Use your own words, use your own experience. Yes, if you are starting off, maybe write a short piece and take an article and attach it to it, but give recognition for a person of that article you're attaching to. But the perfect position is when you build up enough experience and when you put in the time and the effort to write your own articles, to post your own posts, that's when success starts building a brand. That's when people see you. It's also important that you become the magnet or you become what we call the go-to person. And how do you do that? By commenting on other people's posts you are connected to or you, you are following. By interacting with those posts. By interacting with the notifications you get about somebody's career, promotion, birthday, I can go on and on because that is interaction. That is showing you are interested in that person. That is being positive. I need to emphasize that you need to be positive on social media. You need not to be trolled in. What does the word trolled in mean? There's people out there just saying things to get you cross, to get you frustrated so that you can comment and then it blows up in your face. That's called trolling. Don't get involved with trolling. So if you can't be positive, don't comment, don't post, don't interact. Because then you'll go from building a personal brand to building a crap brand, a brand that's not worth it, a brand that people know is this guy that's going to be negative all the time. Now, what else is important about social media is you obviously want to do it for a purpose. Well, find your purpose while you're doing it. I is your purpose to prospect, to get more clients, to build your brand, to become the magnet, or is your purpose changing over time, evolving? My purpose initially, 2005, many years was, was to build prospects, of course, was to find the right clients. But my purpose has changed completely. My purpose is now to use LinkedIn social media as a professional movement, passion for the profession. Because I want our industry to transform into a profession. We need to be proud of what we're doing. We are not life insurance salesmen. We are financial planners. We are financial advisors. A consequence of great advice will be that there could be a product or there could be an insurance sale or there could be an investment. But let's go back to once you've now built your personal brand, how do you use this as digital marketing? Well, it's not as simple on LinkedIn as most probably on Facebook because it is a process. Listen to what I'm saying. It is a process. It's not a project. So what do I mean by it is a process? It means it's something that's going to go on since I've been on it since 2005 for years and years, and I need to use that process to change, to transform, to evolve as digital marketing and branding is evolving, as social media is evolving. So the one thing you don't want to do on LinkedIn is if you decide by using all the search tools, I mean, LinkedIn has got fantastic tools and applications you can use, where you can go down to the CEO of this company, in this country, in this state. That's how far you can go down. So you can define somebody in your area you want to talk to. Just remembering with the virtual world, we are now borderless. We don't now have to look at the state or country or city. We are borderless. But here's what's important. Don't go and connect to that person. Or don't even go and try to ask the person to connect. Before you have followed him, listen to my advice. First become the follower. Because if you become the follower, you will see what he's posting, that person you've identified or that company. And because you're now following him, you're now interacting with that person. You are building a virtual relationship. A virtual relationship. By following him, by commenting, and please don't comment by not being authentic. Comment with truth from the heart and mean it. Because people are going to see who you are and what you are if you're trying to BS them, if I can use that word. But once you followed them for three months, 
Maybe because you are interacting so much with them, they are following you back. As soon as they're following you back, there's an indication that virtual relationship is building. But then when you see they ask you for information on a Ford Leadership article you wrote about critical illness, that's even better. But if that doesn't happen for some other reason, it becomes time to connect, to send an email, personalized invite, not as a general invite, to John and saying, John, I've been following you. I'm so excited to see what you're doing. I see you've been commenting on some of my posts and so on. I see you were very excited about the critical illness that I've discussed in one of my articles. Would you mind connecting to me that we can have more ease of communication? Now, that all is a process. You see what I mean when I say it's a process? Now, can you imagine that the normal new advisor have to go through that process? No. They want quick results, and there's the problem. And Facebook gives them quick results, but it's not necessarily you right niche client you want to be on. So you need to go through this process. And why do I use LinkedIn as my primary? I link my LinkedIn to my Twitter. So when I post on LinkedIn, it goes to Twitter. And when I post on Instagram, I can let that post onto Twitter or similar. Because LinkedIn is the content. Twitter is the 140 characters where I can quickly communicate from a conference, get involved with politics, Putin, the war, and all these things, and Brexit, and, and, and trumpet. Instagram, I use because a picture tells a thousand words. A picture tells a thousand words. You keep it short, you keep it sweet, but people then also see Kubis claim in a more social, relaxed environment on Instagram. Kubis see uh, people see purpose on Twitter as the person that can communicate quickly and effectively. And on LinkedIn, people see purpose as the professional that they could most probably deal with. So a long story, but I wanted to understand that it's a process, it's not a project. It's a transformation. It's evolving on a continuous basis. And when you embrace social media, when you understand the power of social media, you will become the magnet. You will become the brand. You will become the go-to person. And people will be in contact with you on a continuous basis where it gets so, so bad that you can't keep up with the amount of people and emails you get on social media. Thanks, Sati. Thank you, Jan. Oh, wonderful. Uh, uh, it's a uh, mind blowing and uh, power of back. So I have got a lot of questions now to ask you. Uh, uh, you're just talking about a uh, LinkedIn profiling, right? That's a, uh, that's a premium on it's been to pay and you have to obtain it. So which you recommend for the new advice? First, they have to try it in the normal one, then they go for the premium one. Very good question. Firstly, when I joined initially, I did not have the premium one. I wasn't even aware of the premium one. And uh, it's obviously about cost. Initially, you can do, you can use it to build your brand, but you're gonna find it difficult to look for the right client, niche client or segmentation you wanna operate in. So as I was building, I realized about premium and I looked at the costs on a monthly basis and the contract. And I was happy with what I was seeing because my brand evolved. And I wouldn't use it before my brand has been created. Once your brand is created, you can start looking at premium. And then I said, I'm going to use premium. And I did um, subscribe to premium. And I used it for quite a couple of years because I could pinpoint. I mean, the search without premium allows 10 searches. The search with premium allows 100 plus. You can also see when the reason for premium and why it's important is you can directly email people that you want to talk to. The reason for premium is, is people are following you. You can only see 10 or 20 versus if you're on premium, you can see 100. And you can therefore go through every person that followed you, connected to you, and see is that the client base. So premium for any person building a, a company, for any person building a book, a client base, a practice, I would say premium would be important. Yes, it's expensive, but believe me, if you get one client from using premium, and you give advice to one client from using premium. And a consequence of that advice you've given them is a product, is an investment. 
your fees or commissions or whatever way that you remunerate yourself will pay for that premium for that monthly base by only signing up one client. So absolutely premium is highly recommended. I don't use it anymore. I don't have to use it anymore because to me, it's not about building a book anymore, building a practice anymore. I've got way too many clients and I, I have to therefore consolidate what I'm doing. Wonderful. So uh, even I have to adopt the system and just to change over to premium, uh, I mean, having it up. And uh, the uh, you're just talking about uh, uh, LinkedIn uh, content, which is keeps changing the profile pictures and other thing. Uh, how often they have to do that one? And uh, they have to use the grammar-oriented uh, grammar content on any specific software they have to use it or it will be a normal convocation so they can able to put it up. So, so to answer your first question, if I understand you right, so to me, it's regularly important, and I would say on a monthly basis, or as you have events. So if you, if you uh, were to follow my LinkedIn profile, you would see my picture do changes on a regular basis. Sometimes it can change two, three times on a monthly basis. And you would even see my title or my what, I, what people would put in, I'm a financial planner. You would see I have headings. I call it heading. And I would change it to advocate for the profession or loyal to, to our country, South Africa, or I'm a life happens ambassador. So my title will change continuously. It won't, you won't even realize I'm a financial planner most of the time because that's what I want clients to see, when I want clients to feel. So feel to change it regularly, that's important. When you place content, it's important when you place content to get your grammar and your spelling and things right for English. I use a program called Grammarly.com. Grammarly.com is an amazing program, but I want to tell you a trick, now that I think about it, Sakti. Google Translate is an amazing program. Google Translate allows me to talk to you or to somebody from Japan or Malaysia or wherever in the world in their own language. Now, how powerful it is when you respond to somebody in Greek, in Greece. That is amazing. So there's so many tools. I can talk about it all day, but find some tools that makes you effectively and use tools like Canva. Canva.com is a tool where you can create images for your Instagram post, for your LinkedIn post. There's so much you can use. And therefore, be professional and try to be professional. I mean, my language is not English. My home language is not English. My home language is Afrikaans. It's a type of a Dutch. But I had to learn how to write grammar in English to be a professional. And I remember my first, how many posts, 2005, 8, 9, 10, for many years, I got it wrong. I didn't even realize I got it wrong because, because people are too kind to not tell you you're getting your words wrong and your grammar wrong. Until one day somebody did tell me, Kubis, sure, you know, this is, not, this is not professional. Then I said, this must stop. I was either going to learn and go back to school to an education English teacher to teach, that they teach me how to talk English and how to use the right is or are. Then I found Grammarly. Oh, what a chance that's made in my life. I use it to, I can use it to do my books. And I'm busy now with my fourth book. And I use Grammarly very often for that. So be flexible to change the way you use social media. Wow. I, I also explored into that and uh, learning about uh, Kobus. It's a wonderful that. So uh, in this LinkedIn uh, posting, uh, Kobus, uh, how often you, you want to uh, post it? So I, I see that on you know, the Facebooks, you know, we have a habit that uh, we take morning on photograph, afternoon photograph, evening on photograph. Whenever you feel happy, we'll post it out. And then the WhatsApp again, every day we have a habit of putting uh, status and other things. But I feel that LinkedIn uh, uh, should be some kind of uniformity need, right? So at least one post in a day, that could be good, right? Uh, my philosophy on that is very clear. Defend, depending on what platform you're using, Instagram, Twitter. So Twitter, you can do it very regularly because it's about the news. It's about being up to date. Instagram, you want to do it as events happens or Facebook, as you say. But LinkedIn, to me, is about the continuity and the recurringness of putting yourself out there. But it must be adding value. It must just not be a post because you want to post something, an event or something has happened or your career. LinkedIn must add value. To me, I don't have a process or a system, that's maybe a better word, a system 
that says Kubis must post every Thursday or every Wednesday. Kubis must post every Tuesday at eight o'clock. We now in a borderless community. So there's no time frame because if I post now, America can only read that eight hours from now because they are sleeping most probably at the moment. Australia. So there's no more borders if you don't operate only in your country as a financial planner. So when you post, there's no, and never, sorry, I wouldn't, I mustn't use the word never because people have different successes. I don't believe in automation, for instance. You get many programs and applications where you can put something on and say, put the program that that program will post at that time, that time, that time. On LinkedIn, there's not a preferred time of posting. It just doesn't exist in my opinion because I can post something on a Sunday that gets 10,000 views. I can post something on a Monday morning at eight o'clock. It gets 5,000 views. It really depends on the content. People are reading your content. People are looking at your picture, firstly, at your diagrams. And if you don't get that to be interesting, people are not going to view or connect to that post. So to answer your question, content must be valuable. It must not be automated, in my opinion. I respond to all my own posts, comment to all, all my own posts, and to other people's posts, all my LinkedIn emails myself. I do not automate any of my social media. You're saying, but Corvus, how did you get to all of this if you don't automate it? Well, you make time. You become efficient. You create a habit. It's part of your practice. It's part of your business. Don't automate, because as soon as you start automating, you're not authentic, because it's not your words. Don't get somebody else to write your articles. Don't get somebody else to run your social media. Not you as a financial planner. Maybe as a company, it doesn't matter because there's many people. But if Corbis Claim is the brand, if Sakti is the brand, are you branding your authenticity out there every day? Thanks. Wonderful, wonderful. Um, that, that's some, something which I, I myself want to learn it from that because uh, uh, I, I was normally not in much active because I was more active on WhatsApp and uh, uh, nowadays I'm in Insta also. But I feel uh, LinkedIn, I need, I normally feel like not, not only me, normally the ins uh, insurance professional or sales profession think that it's only platform for a, uh, for a record uh, means employment kind, kind of things we can able to use it or could be a marketing one and uh, other thing, but they need expert to teach about that. So that's about, I take it up after you, after listening from you, I, I normally feel that it could be a common man can able to bring him to their own skills to their, to develop their uh, aspects. Wonderful uh, purpose that we are taking up. Uh, I want to add on to what you're saying, Sakti. Sorry, let me interrupt you because you've made a very important point. LinkedIn most probably did start many, many years ago as a recruitment platform, as a place where people can find jobs and professional jobs. I don't doubt it. But like anything, social media evolves and it evolves over time. I think the smallest part of LinkedIn at the moment is a recruitment process. Because I think if you brand yourself correctly on social media, if you market yourself correctly on social media, you would not have to look for recruitment. You would not have to prospect for recruitment. You will be recruited, headhunted by somebody on that, and not a recruiter, but a CEO or somebody that's on LinkedIn that runs a professional company, and they will recruit you but LinkedIn is way, way not about recruitment anymore. Yes, there is a platform for recruitment on LinkedIn and sales and all those separate apps that you can use. But LinkedIn is about a professional website for professional people that want to share content, that want to learn from each other, and that want to build a profession. And it may be legal, it may be financial, it doesn't matter. So those days of LinkedIn being perceived as recruitment, not true anymore. Wonderful, wonderful. Because that uh, that's amazing one, and uh, the, you're talking about the uh, the. Uh, I'm not much familiar with the Twitter. Will the Twitter help us to get generate prospecting? Uh, what was your review? Sorry, just just review your question again. I didn't hear the beginning. I, I, I'm not familiar to using the Twitter one, so that's going to be more political zone. I'm not using it. Will that useful for the insurance advisor to get it in uh, leads or prospecting? Twitter is very powerful. And Twitter is very powerful because it's very live. It's very active. It's very immediate. I've got a financial planner um, friend 
Mr. Torben, Terence Torben. He, he started also 10, 15 years ago. He has perfected, in my opinion, the way you use Twitter as a financial advisor. Because you can only put 140 characters in there. You can only comment at 140 characters. Very powerful, very effective, because you're not writing long stories that people don't have time to actually read. And what he does on a daily basis, three, four times a day, because it's not like LinkedIn, we have to plan your posts and your content and so on. He just writes, Conan, have you heard about the latest interest rates? Have you had the financial planner talking to you? Do you understand dread disease? 140 characters all the time. Very powerful, very quick, and very effective. And people start following you if the content you put out short and sweet with a pick or two works for you. So I definitely can believe, and I do believe Twitter gives you that extra emphasis. If you use LinkedIn successfully, Twitter can give you a different client base, a different brand base. So I'm definitely for Twitter and I've seen Twitter work effectively with so many of my fellow advisors that is willing to spend that quick and effective time on Twitter. Great. Um, I'll adapt it. I'll start using it. I've uh, been putting it a bit. Um, uh, definitely, they could be uh, uh, financial groups, right? So I can't put it in the, uh, it could not be much powerful putting it in the norm of the common public, right? So should then be target audience will be, right? So, of course. So, for instance, one of the things that um, I find on that we use well, so I'm an international ambassador for Life Happens, as you may know. And we have different um, awareness. Um, in February, we've got the Love Month and Love Your Love World, Life Insurance Month. In May, we're coming up now, we have Disability Insurance Awareness Month. And in September, we've got Life Insurance Awareness Month. With what they do effectively, they use Twitter to run like we did on the 14th of February, to run Love Happens, Love Insurance Month. And then we have a Twitter evening and everybody gets involved. I mean, it's amazing what Twitter can do to get the brand out there of Life Happens as an example. And the same you can do with your company as an example. Wonderful, wonderful. And we just discussed about Instagram. So I also been actively sending Instagram and uh, it's similar to the Facebook, but I feel there's more value than a Facebook because it's, you can even target the um, uh, certain communities and you can able to generate the prospecting and that. And uh, what was your view on Instagram? My view on Instagram is very positive. I do use it, but I don't try to use it every day or even every week, as you will see, because to me, that is the ideal place where a picture can tell a thousand words. So instead of you having to write the thousand words, you pick the right picture, the right event, you, the authenticity in that picture or an event you attended or something special that has happened, an award you received, recognition you, you receive, and you keep those words as short as possible because you want to focus on the picture or the video and not on the words per se. And that is where you are gonna put out a slightly different view of Kurvis claim the professional. You're gonna put out the view of Kurvis not always in a suit and a tie. Kurvis do have a personal life. He does have a social life, but even that will have a professional link to it. It will still not be Cooper standing with a beer in his hand or a cigar in his, you know, no, that doesn't work. Or, you know, really looking badly dressed and his tummy hanging out. That is the, the, the threat of using Instagram and Facebook for the wrong reasons. Because if you are connecting to your clients, I mean, LinkedIn, it's so important that you connect to as many as possible of your current clients. Because LinkedIn is not just for prospecting of new clients. LinkedIn is for your existing client base to be linked to, to be connected to, so they can see Kubis the brand developing, transforming all these achievements. So they are proud of Kubis to stick to my brand and to stick to me as an advisor. Instagram, if you are linking your clients to Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, they're going to be linked to all of your accounts. You should be linking them to all your accounts. So if you link your professional CEO to your Instagram and you put a bad post on Instagram, that's going to reflect on your professional status with your client. Uh, that's should be very careful, right? So to prefer uh, targeting into the right words to also be prepared. Now, what was your view on Facebook and uh, WhatsApp? 
Okay, so let me answer the Facebook one because that's easy. I am not on Facebook. I've never had a Facebook account. My wife has a Facebook account and I don't follow it, but she tells me what's happening to the family and friends and colleagues and so on. Why don't I have a Facebook account? Because I believe a Facebook account is for what I refer to as the domestic market. What is the domestic market? That is where people are having babies and you know there needs an education plan for the baby. People get married, people get divorced, people are promoted, people are just talking in general. So that's what I call a domestic client base, not always a professional client base. And I didn't see my way open to that. And I also saw Facebook as a friend when your family posts about you or somebody else posts about you and your family comes over negative and then they perceive your family, your children is negative. So you must be negative. So perceptions plays a major role why I did not join Facebook. But I must tell you, I am aware of so many MDRT members and other financial advisors and especially female advisors in Malaysia, in the East, where Facebook is amazing where Facebook worked for them so well because they want that market. And if you want that market, then Facebook is the way to go. Talk about WhatsApp. Now, WhatsApp to me is not a social media platform or part of the, the, the power of personal branding, but it can, it is if you create a group that you've already prospected. So WhatsApp to me is one of my, well, I want to say currently, my most powerful online communication tool with my existing client base. I use WhatsApp broadcast and I use WhatsApp broadcast because I create these groups and that's what I communicate on a regular basis at one stage over the last two years on a daily basis, once at least a day, about COVID, about what's happening uh, in the markets, about you know lockdowns. And it, I became the beacon of light, the beacon of hope in my clients, because when I post it on WhatsApp on this group, it's a one-sided group. This is not a two-way communication. Broadcast is one. I can communicate and they can communicate with them, but my clients can't communicate with each other. Be careful of that. And WhatsApp broadcast has become a powerful tool where it's become not the fake news to my client. It's become the factual news to my client. It's become this thing where if I say something about COVID, or trumpet, or Brexit, or now the war in Putin, Ukraine, and those things, people know it's factual. It's not the fake news over WhatsApp, over Facebook, over social media. How you use that for your existing client base builds your brand, makes you stronger, makes you more sustainable. I don't use that for marketing, for prospecting. But you know what's the interesting thing? Because it's become so powerful, Saki, my clients share all those messages with their friends, their colleagues, their clients, because they know this is not fake news. They know if they put this on WhatsApp, this is not fake news. It's not somebody going to do this or not. And therefore, it goes from tier one to tier two to tier three to tier four. And because always on WhatsApp, I put either my domain, www.quibusclaim.com on there, or my profile me signature. And my profile me is an app that once you click on it, you've seen it, once you open it up, it's got all your credentials. So the amount of people contacting me through friends, colleagues, and this thing moving around is amazing. Again, it's a problem because I can't keep, I can't keep up with it. But when you brand yourself on WhatsApp as an online communication tool, and one of the things you may want to do is as you build up that LinkedIn context or social media context, you may put them in a WhatsApp group. And you may then start communicating on Ford Leadership articles. It does not become a sales tool. It becomes an indir indirect marketing tool, if you appreciate what I'm saying. Okay. Don't go out on WhatsApp and advertise products or advertise a website. Advertise value. Advertise you. Advertise what advice is about. Because the consequence of doing that, Sakti, will lead, in any case, to people contacting you. Well, the WhatsApp status, they're keeping it for the products and uh, benefits. Will that encourageable, uh, Opus? Sorry, the, the status? Because uh, the two questions that the WhatsApp one, that one is that they are opening a separate account for the business account. They're opening it. So the WhatsApp, you have business account and individual accounts are there. The second one, they're keeping the status 
all these insurance products and uh, they exploring them will that be a right attitude well firstly i use a normal personal whatsapp account i have not created a business whatsapp account because i don't see a difference between the two if i communicate with my clients on whatsapp or prospects on that is how i communicate i don't have a business account to be safe and a personal account to be not safe because they are going to be connected somewhere it's going to be on google or internet or something like that so be careful of that the second thing is the status on whatsapp i don't use it myself personally i use direct whatsapp with direct clients and i communicate in that way with it and i do not communicate products or sales or marketing basically on whatsapp i communicate value proposition recognition advice on whatsapp and people would then contact me directly either through my profile me or my dom- domain and we can then talk any products or investments or any other advice wonderful uh, wonderful course and uh, just moving to the final question i'm just asking that uh, uh, there there is there is uh, there, I, i i normally don't see there is a uniformity of uh, uh the way of the business cards and profiling system right so each one use different profilings and they have been sending some of them to me digitally some of them in physically and uh, how you fi- how you uh, because you've been with the 20 years in the industry right so do you able to find out something which has to be genuinely client must know for you that what what was the things they should be there yeah uh, i believe every culture have different business card philosophies but i do believe the world has changed into a digital virtual world so maybe if you go to um, japan today you would want to have a business card still if you physically going there you maybe want to still hand over that physical platinum aluminium business card in some countries that's still a culture and nothing wrong with that okay but the world is gone digital and this thing that you've got is a digital tool in your hand and in your client's hand. So in simple terms, I've been struggling with this. I've had QR codes and I've had digital cards and this, but then I came upon three, four years ago, what we call Profile Me. And you can just Google Profile Me and you'll see, and that is a digital application. Now it started as a digital business card and it was a QR code and you could scan the QR code or you could, for instance, go and stand next to your colleague and you can just open your QR code you can open his on his phone and it will automatically transfer it from phone to phone that's the way to do it there's no doubt about it but profile me has taken it a step further where now we have an application and i actually got involved because i liked what they were doing so much that i helped them to redesign what we called from a digital card to a digital application but that's more than a business card it is the business card it is the QR card but it's also a direct contact method to whatsapp my clients to whatsapp me it's a direct contact method for email it's a direct contact method to share my contact details with their friends and their colleagues and so on it even has an application where through a gps my clients can come straight to my office by just pushing on a button but most importantly and you may see it here every client of mine have got my picture on their phone because i have sent them the profile me and when they wake up they see quivers when they want to talk to quivers they click on that button and my whole application opens up when they go and sleep they see quivers you in their face all the time and that is so important therefore move with the times your digital business card in this case profile me there's many others can be shared on computer through whatsapp through email through meeting each other at the conference and just opening your phone and poops you share the business card then then paper business cards i don't know i don't think it's a future it shouldn't be a future but maybe in one or two cultures it can still stay a future wow amazing kobas uh, and uh, I keep having the questions and I keep want to connect with me of more more details and that maybe we'll be connecting on more program to about some other different topics we'll go and discuss it and uh, i hope uh, i will learn a lot of things on social media branding and uh, mainly on linkedin and twitter and instagram which was been very valuable you talk about that how active should be a, a insurance professional to generate the prospect in that it was been a very eye opening uh, conversations with you 
thanks so much for as an expert you've been coming and talking about this digital branding and marketing uh thank you kopas thank you sakti i want to end up with with just two comments that firstly what i've spoken about now i wrote about in my first book called passion for the profession any one of your viewers can go and download it now at www.kobusclaim.com i'm also writing my fourth book called accelerate your brand i've been battling to finish that book to be honest with you because of covid and many other reasons but that book when it comes out will also be a complimentary book and that will go into much more detail about social media marketing digital what i refer to as accelerate your brand with the power of social media so look forward to that one hopefully i can finish it during this year thank you for the time i really appreciate being here with you sakti wonderful wonderful kobas and that's a gift for the members who watching this and uh, after this video on this description i'm putting the kobas ka details and uh, the mainly uh, you talk about the book this is a complimentary one you can able to download from its website and i'm just putting kobas email id as well as my email id you have any more questions kindly write to us and i'll ask kobas about that and we will be addressing it to our next program when we meet with kobas thank you so much for watch, watching this one and definitely i will be come out with a different expert on next time with the different topics thank you so much have a wonderful day thank you kobas Thank you.